Hi, Truth Hunters. Today, I have a very special guest with me. This is Kevin McGarry. Kevin is very qualified to talk about the subject. He sits as the chairman. You know what, Kevin, why don't you just say? <laughs> I'm the uh, chairman of the Frederick Douglass Foundation of California and also an executive on the Douglass Leadership Institute. There you go. You did that so much better than I would have done. So thank you so much for coming on the channel today. And yeah, you, ha yeah, you have a new YouTube channel, very yes. new, and you have just been spitting out video, video, video after video. And everyone that I've watched, I've enjoyed. And I'm like, this man is speaking the truth. So uh, <laughs> I think it's a pleasure to have you here. And one of your more recent videos was actually a letter or not a letter, a question that you pose to, to faith leaders or leaders in the church and whether or not they should be following or supporting Black Lives Matter, the movement Black Lives Matter. I think we, we all agree Black Lives Matter, that, that's a given, but it's kind of taken a new form, new shape of something. So right. Uh, yeah, so maybe just touch on that. Yeah, so uh, what I began to see is that a lot of uh, really, you know, passionate, sincere faith leaders are taken by the theme of Black Lives Matter. We can all agree with the theme that Black lives really do matter. But when we start uh, talking about supporting an organization that is violent, vicious, um, vile in many ways, antithetical to what we, what, to, to faith foundations, uh, anti-Christian, anti-family, uh, anti-man, anti-father. Um, these are all things that are really important to building black life. And yet this organization who purports to want to support black life is completely rejecting those. So as faith leaders, it was important for me to really put what black lives matter, what they say about themselves. Yeah. So I didn't make that up. I didn't, I wasn't trying to disparage black lives matter. I was just exposing what they say about themselves. Mm -hmm. They call themselves Marxist revolutionaries. They call themselves, um, you know, homosexual affirming, trans affirming, uh, they call themselves, uh, you know, anti-nuclear family. They call themselves, um, you know, globalists. These are the things that they call themselves. Mm -hmm. And for, for us as people of faith, and especially for faith leaders, these are the things that we need to be wise about and uh, not just, you know, sort of fall in with. The word, word tells us that even the elect, meaning even the highly esteemed theologian types, uh, will be deceived in the last days. So we need to be aware of the times and the season. We need to be discerners of the heart of God and discerners of what's happening around us so we could appropriately lead our flocks. Mm -hmm. Too many of our pastors are not doing that. They may be well-intentioned, but they're not well-educated about, you know, about what they're leading their flock into. Some of them, I believe, are so in alignment with Black Lives Matter, even the more radical elements of it, because they, uh, they resonate with, we want to put whites on the defensive. Mm -hmm. it's, it, they, they should begin to feel what we felt or what we've gone through or some of our pain or, you know, yeah, it's time for us to kind of level up on them and and that, of course, is not of God either. No. And we, we've got to deal with that as well. They're so divisive in the Black Lives Matter movement. It, it's very, you know, you're here, you're here, and it's very hard to mesh. And that isn't, as a Christian, that's not what we're led to be. Even if you have a different lifestyle, we are called to, to love you. And, that's right. you know, and so I see a real difference in that with everything that's happening. There's a church nearby me here, very close nearby. And, and right on the billboard, it says Black Lives Matter. Uh, if I have the picture, I'll put it there, if it's still there. And I just wonder, you know, how much thought did they really put into what that all means, what you're, what you're basically preaching to everybody in the neighborhood. And it, it's a little bit frightening, honestly. I did a video about why I do not support Black Lives Matter on this channel. And 
sifting through the video of, of, you know, some of the protests and things like that. And even some of the things that the leaders in the movement have said, you know, I was just so disgusted actually with, um, in my mind, a lot of it was racism, like you're, you're saying, you know, kind of condemning white people. Well, you know, that's the skin that they were born with. And, right. you know, I know uh, white people in my life who had very hard upbringings and were born right. in rural, white, poor areas and have, you know, have had things happen to them from their family right. that I wouldn't even have dreamt of having. And so just because they're white, uh, they're somehow privileged. So right. the the logic in all of this is is not really there. And I had some Christian friends reach out to me and say things like, oh, how are you doing? And and this and that. And it's like, well, I've been black my whole life. <laughs> you right, know? Right, and, right. And, and you've always treated me equal. You've always treated me like a friend. I haven't had to to think twice with my interactions with you. So why are you kind of hunkered down now and, and right. your tail between your legs? And, you know, it's just not anything that I want to be a part of. And I, do, I would want my church to see that, no, this is not what we're called to be doing right now. What is your take on the whole white privilege thing? Quite honestly, when I hear that and when people try to say, well, <clears throat> Kevin, is there white privilege? And I tell them, I said, look, we live in America. You live in Canada, but <clears throat> excuse me. But I, I, I tell people here in America, look, we live in America. We're all privileged. Every last one of us. Mm -hmm. And um, so the whole privileged argument or conversation has more to do with uh, uh, some, some, some kind of justification for where people end up in life. Uh, and for us as believers, um, we have our source. Our mm -hmm. source is God alone. And no man, no organization, no institution, no power on earth can prevent me from where God wants me to be. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trusting and relying on God to take me wherever he wants to take me, use my life to whatever degree he wants to use it, it is what it is. And in that way, I'm privileged. Us who are Bible-believing Christians, we're biblically privileged in the sense that we actually have a God that loves us. We have a loving relationship with a father. We have a friend. We have a brother in Jesus sit, you know, who, who walks with us. We have a comforter in the Holy Spirit. That is a great privilege that a lot of the world is not privy to because they choose to reject it. So even us, and especially us in the, in, in, in the church, we're all privileged. Mm -hmm. And so for us to sort of take a secular notion and as some way try to ascribe that we should be living sort of with the same outcomes as other people, it's absurd. Tell my brothers in the Lord and pastors, as I take them through this, I said, Jesus gave us a parable, the parable of the talents. He gave one, 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 two, and one, five. The one that had two and five, they doubled theirs. The one that had one buried it. Now, if it, were, if it were God's notion that we should all have equal outcome, equal starting points with equal outcome, with the same level of talent and skills, then wouldn't Jesus have said, look, I gave you all the exact same starting point and you all, you know, except this one buried it. But Jesus himself, you know, helped, you know, color the narrative with uh, everybody has different skills, talents, and abilities. Mm -hmm. And so it's a preposterous notion that we all expect to end up with the same outcome. It's almost like we're denying the God exists at all, mm -hmm. that we're somehow just, uh, you know, deists, and God is disconnected from us, and we're just trying to, you know, make it work in our own terms. And if God has privileged somebody else to have a, a certain kind of a life that maybe I want, but uh, and maybe I'm a little bit jealous or covetous about, then that's an issue for me to deal with me. Mm -hmm. That's actually God's message to me. Look, you're covetous about the kind of life I've granted by grace this other person. Mm -hmm. So you have an issue. Your issue is some of these major sins that I outlined. Jealousy, yeah. envy, 
greed. That's you. That's that, yeah. that's our issue. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But we want to um, project it. <clears throat> excuse me. Project it outward as if somebody else holds responsibility for my plight. Yeah, you know, I worry especially what the message to our young people, and I notice there are a lot of young people involved in this movement, and, you know, how is that going to affect them in the future? I'll never forget I was on the bus years ago. I don't even know why I was on the bus. Maybe my car wasn't working. I don't know. Um, and there was this teenage boy and he was sitting there and he had like a pack of M&Ms or Skittles or something. And he was taking each candy and just throwing it down the bus. And there was tons of people on the bus. And so I said, why are you doing that? And he looked at me and he said, I have ADHD. <laughs> and I said, so <laughs> why right. are you doing that? And I just felt, I don't know anything other than the interaction that I had with him, but I just felt like the label he had been given he had owned that and excused so much behavior from it. I mean, he's yeah. traveling by himself. He's getting on and off of the bus and going to wherever he's capable of these things. So I have faith that he's capable to not throw candy down a public bus. But right. his, his answer was, I have ADHD. Like it was supposed to resonate with me. Like, oh, okay, perceive that. Right. So right. <laughs> that's what I worry with all of this talk about being privileged and not privileged solely based on the color of your skin, not your socioeconomic right. surroundings, not your family structure, not your education, all of these things. And I think it's really scary. And, and we got to have more people from all backgrounds who are calling this for what it is, be bold enough to speak out. And I feel like that white people, I can kind of see it would be pretty scary. I mean, even for black people, it's hard to speak out about this. So if you're, you're right. white, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Now, have you been called any names for going public? Are the commenters going after you yet or? No. Uh, so I've been fortunate. Uh, I'm big, black and ugly, so I'm not a good target. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the lord is still working with me with my scrappiness so they if they do they certainly wouldn't do it in in, in my face but yeah um no i haven't uh i'm i'm you know i haven't no that's yeah. good yeah i know i i've typed out responses and then i i delete them <laughs> i yeah. type it out <laughs> i get it out of my system and I, okay i'll delete that but um right yeah, you know, you can't focus on it. And I, I eventually it probably, unless God doesn't want it to, I'm sure you're going to come across some of that. I don't know. We just live in such a, a strange time, but and for any, yeah, for anybody watching, I want you to go over to Kevin's channel, check out some of his videos, share whichever ones are interesting to you. I really like, I think the first one that I saw uh, was just how the Democratic Party is systemically racism. I, I really like that one. Uh, and it, it's true, right? Or s systemically racist. So yep. I'll, I'll link your channel in the, I'll link your channel in the description. And who I knows? did another one recently mm -hmm. uh, on white fragility. I don't know if you saw yeah. that one, but um, yeah, well, I'll check yeah. it out for sure. Um, but yeah, guys, check him out. He's in the description of this and say hi. But yeah, thank you so much for being here. And I think it's a good question. Should Christians support the Black Lives Matter organization? And you gave some good insight for that. Well, good. Good. It was my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. I really thank appreciate it. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe right. if you're new to the channel. Okay. All right. Bye. God bless you. Take care. God bless you.